from Convention Hall here in the boxing capital of the world of Atlantic City, New Jersey, HBA, Ron Katz Matchmaker, and Bud Sports, in association with the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino on the boardwalk here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, proudly present Friday Night Ringside. It's, it's the vacant United States Boxing Association Heavyweight Championship right. scheduled for 12 rounds. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 12 rounds, the title bout, referee Randy Newman. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First, in the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with the gold trim. He tipped in at 242 and one quarter pounds. This gentleman has 20 wins, 2 losses, 14 knockouts. He is ranked number 3 by both the United States Boxing Association and the International Boxing Federation. A native of Greensboro, North Carolina. And now, residing in Las Vegas, Nevada, ladies and gentlemen, here is Big James Broadax Broad. Broad. And his opponent in the red corner, wearing the white trunks with the black trim. He weighed in at an even 216 pounds. This young man is undefeated in 33 professional bouts with 29 knockouts. He is ranked currently number one by both the United States Boxing Association and the International Boxing Federation. From the Motor City of Detroit, and the state of Michigan. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Tony TNT Tucker. Tucker. Okay, gentlemen, you're both familiar with the rules of the state and the association. Do you have any questions at this time? All right, that being the case, remember, defend yourselves at all times. Shake hands and come out of the belt. And so Ed Darien has rather dramatically and rather colorfully set the stage and he has brought the fighters back to touch gloves. They walk, they have been snorting in that ring, walking around with the game faces on now for seven or eight minutes. Uh, they had a hold up while we uh, had the intro to our uh, television broadcast tonight, Murray. And that's why I suggested they looked like they had been caged. They're storming around this ring, ready to get at each other. Sam, they're ready to go. They're all pumped up, fired up. They know what's on the line. They know the winner of this fight is more or less guaranteed a title shot. They're ready. With the look on both fighters' face, I will be shocked if this thing goes more than three rounds. Broad misses a wild left. James Broad said today, the only word that is key to him in this fight is aggression. Aggression. He repeated over and over again. He will be the pursuer. It'll be incumbent upon Tony Tucker to counterpunch and stay out of his way for the first couple of rounds. This is so unlike James Broad, Sam, he has been noted in the past as only fighting about one minute of each round. He's very, very lazy, so to speak, but he's come out, he's trying to knock Tucker out this time. Tony Tucker, 33-0, and 0, as we pointed out a couple of times already, with 29 knockouts, an incredible percentage of 88, which ranks him second to only Mike Tyson among the active heavyweights. But Broad has certainly brought the fight to him here in the early seconds of round number one, as he said he would. And if James Broad looks a little bit different to you anatomically, it's because he has gone through a very rigorous conditioning program, and if the fight lasts long enough, Murray will tell our viewing audience tonight what he's been doing. But it's questionable how long this thing will last. Sam, every punch that Broad's throwing, he's got every bit of his weight behind it, and that's a lot of weight. If one of those punches lands, this could be a very early night for Tony Tucker. We're about halfway through round number one, scheduled for 12. It's a USBA heavyweight championship on the line, but more importantly, looking past the belt in the crown for both of these young men is a big payday and Mr. Michael Spinks. Just so you know how this fight will be run, the referee, Randy Newman, it is governed by USBA rules, which means they have waived the three knockdowns. There is no standing eight count. Only the referee can stop the fight, but he can request the doctor's advice. It is a 10-point must system if you wish to score along with us at home tonight. 
which means the winner of each round must be given 10 points. The referee has no count at all in the scoring of the fight. There are three judges ringside who will determine the fight if it goes 12 rounds. Nearing the end of round number one, as you see under 30 seconds to go, James Broad came out snorting, heated for about 30 seconds, and his aggression died very quickly, Murray, did it not? It did a little bit, uh, Sam. I have been observing, though, that uh, Broad has kept the pressure on just steadily walking into Tony Tucker, and uh, he's doing what he predicted, putting the pressure on and keeping it on. We'll return with more of this USBA heavyweight title fight in a moment. The bell in round two, scheduled for 12, the USBA heavyweight championship. As Broad again comes out at the aggressor, James Broad in the black trunks with a gold waistband, and his opponent, Tony Tucker. And you almost can't tell the way Broad dwarfs Tucker at times by the 25 or 26 pound weight advantage that Tony Tucker stands six, four and a half himself. Tucker using the jab, which he considers to be his best punch and try to stay out of harm's way early on when James Broad is almost as much as guaranteed that he will land some lightning here early on. When we interviewed him today, Sam, you might recall when we asked Broad, do you expect him to run from you? And his, there was a look of surprise on his face. He says, where can he run? He's inside the ring. Where can he run? I'll catch him. You must know the feeling, huh? James Broad uh, spent many of his deformative years uh, in neighboring Wildwood, New Jersey. So he is well known to the folks here in Atlantic City, or this crowd that uh, frequents the uh, Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino, under two minutes to go in the second round. And you might be a little bit puzzled by our remarks at the opening of the broadcast when we mentioned that both Tucker and uh, Broad had been in the limelight for a number of years, yet nobody has known about them. The fact, oh, good combination by uh, Tony Tucker. He got his punches in and came back out again. And he's working the left jab very well on James Broad. The fact of the matter is, as Murray mentioned, James Broad knocked out Marvis Frazier before NBC's national television audience during the Olympic trials from Atlanta in 1980. So everybody knew his name, but he hasn't done much to follow up on that. On the other hand, Tony Tucker has been called by virtually everybody over the last six years the best unknown fighter in the world, and he's showing it right now, working high and low. Tucker landed a beautiful left jab and followed it with a short, snapping right hand, which connected flush on James Broad's chin. But then James Broad, James Broad shook it, come right back with a good punch of his own. These guys are starting to settle in now and land some terrific, terrifically good punches. We've got Broad in trouble right now. Double left hook by Tony Tucker, and he's got Broad in trouble along the ropes. Tony Tucker with a left and a right. Broad now takes a screaming left off the uh, right side of his face. And Tucker landing combination. We alert the local stations along our network that will be coming your way for a break here if we get through round two and there's under 30 seconds to go. Broad commented about the, the quickness of Tony Tucker's hands, and in the second round, it's evident he has very, very quick hands. This has been an excellent last half of the round for Tony Tucker. And James Broad appears to be winded already. Under 10 seconds to go, we will return for round number three. After this word from your local station. Second round here, Sam. Watch this beautiful left hook here by Tony Tucker. Follows up with some wicked right hands. He had Broad in serious trouble in that second round there, but Broad sugar and come back. And we're back live now. This is a round three scheduled for 12 rounds. A USBA heavyweight championship on the line. It is vacant. It is vacant at the moment. However, James Broad once held this title, then lost it to Tim Witherspoon, and is trying to regain it tonight. You can almost sense the... I don't want to say desperation, Murray, but you can sense the importance to both fighters, both of them, knowing that they should perhaps have progressed farther in their careers at this juncture. You know, they're not spring chickens. They're 27 and 28 years old, respectively, Tucker and Broad. And um, neither of them has advanced as far as perhaps in their own mind they feel they should have. And they know there's big money down the road. Like when we were speaking to uh, Tony Tucker today, Sam, we asked him, have you been fighting for peanuts? And there was a sad look coming on his face and said, yep, I've been fighting for peanuts. He wants to get those big paydays. Under two minutes to go in the third round. 
Referee Randy Newman separates the fighters. There's been some rather continuous action here. Broad has brought, taken the fight to Tucker. Tucker has counterpunched very effectively and, of course, had that great flurry midway through. Oh, and a good right-left combination by Tucker again. He landed a straight right on the nose of James Broad. And Tucker continues to work the left jab. I think we're definitely safe in saying, Sam, that uh, Tucker has the faster of the two hands. Good left jab. Forces the head back of James Broad. I think if Tucker can establish that good, quick jab he's got, he's going to make this a much easier fight for himself. It's going to stop Broad in his tracks coming in, and just as we've seen there, he's going to connect with that good, sharp left hook after it. Want to alert all of our local stations that we will be staying here at the Trump Plaza between rounds three and four. We will remain here and go back to the corners with James Broad and Tony Tucker. You're tired, you're tired. Oh, oh, oh. Tucker has worked Broad rather effectively here through nearly three rounds, and there is some blood now coming from the nose of James Broad. Tucker has been able to use his punches, counter punch, let his combinations go, and then tie up Broad at the points that he wants to do so. Well, Broad is best known for his work inside, and this is what he told us in a pre-fight interview. He's gonna, he wants to get close to Tucker, nullify Tucker's sharp jab, and work close to the body. When he gets close to Tucker, Tucker's doing a wise thing and tying him up, just as we see right here. 10 seconds to go in round three, another very good round for Tony Tucker. He did not score as effectively here in round three, but he certainly has piled up the points, and he's moving very well. So with three rounds history, Tony Tucker, James Broad, take a breather here. And let's go back to the corner now of James Broad and listen to the instructions of his trainer, Johnny on, Taco. Gotta get going with it. All right, James, listen to me close, son. This guy's over here. Got... Come on, forward. You didn't win around yet. You didn't win around. Spit it up. One more reason. And the reason why you didn't win around is you're trying to knock this guy out with one shot. He's boxing you and piling up points. Now you start boxing and get the points back and even up the fight. Let's go. Come on, right double cut and turn the hook in. The other He's side now, Tony Tucker listening to Luther Burgess. Okay. And his keep, the working, keep the jab working. Just keep the jab working. Keep going. Up and down. You see? Stick him up in the body. Stick him on the side. Stick him in the head all the time. Stick him in the body. Stick him in the chest. You know why you can lay that jab in there, okay? Try to step aside. Try to stay out the tension. Okay, okay. gentlemen. <laughs> Some good combinations here from Tucker. James Broad trying to come back to that left hook, but unfortunately Tucker got out of the way. And you heard the handlers for James Broad tell him he hasn't won a round yet. He's trying to knock him out, and therefore he hasn't won a round, according to the cornermen for James Broad. Now Broad throwing out the left jab. My scoring's completely unofficial, Sam. I gave James Broad the first round purely on aggression. Well, you differ with James Broad's handlers, but we'll see what happens if we get to the end of this schedule for 12 rounds. You just get the feeling that Broad had in his mind tonight an early knockout, an early knockout, and when he couldn't put Tucker down, good right hand by Broad. When he couldn't put him down through three rounds, he got a little bit frustrated. There is no question in the minds of boxing experts that Tucker has great agility. He's got the outstanding hand speed, and he certainly is a good defensive fighter. The only question is his power and the opponents that he's fought. He hasn't really fought anybody. Broad just landed an excellent job of his own there, Sam. He's starting to establish his job as well. Under two minutes to go in this, the fourth round, and we will take a local break at the end of the fourth round, a local break. A slashing left hand by Broad. Tucker, obviously the more stylish boxer. Good left hand right in the face of James Broad. He walked right into it. Like Tucker told us in his pre-fight interview, his best punch is his left hook. Sharp, sharp left hook after the jab. And this has been the telling punch from Tony Tucker in this fight up to now. He so, does have excellent quick hands. Though. So far through three and a half rounds, both fighters have been true to their game plan, Murray, I and mean, they haven't disappointed anybody. This yep. is what you, what you expected. Broad has kept the pressure on, and Tucker done what he said he was going to do, use his speed, his quickness, and as he put it, his agility to nullify Broad's attack. James Broad has only lost twice to Tim Witherspoon and to Marvis Frazier. In fact, he won his first 12 professional fights. 
then Marvis Frazier in a rather controversial decision avenged the defeat that Frazier suffered in the U.S. Olympic trials. Great left hand by Braun and now Tucker backpedaling and backpedaling quickly may have been hurt by the left hand. That was a good left hook Sam caught Tucker as he was backing against the ropes and sent his head spinning. A much better round for James Braun. jab by uh, Tucker again who continues to stick the left hand in the face of his opponent and they look about eyeball to eyeball although Broad appears to be a larger man because he outweighs his opponent by 26 we'll be back after this word from your local station it can be deceiving we said that Broad landed a very good left hook and in fact as you look at it again on replay it was a glancing blow Tucker got out of the way yeah that's what's called depth perception sound and thank the Lord for replays we're back live round number five to our uh, director Lou Renoni and our producer Kevin Shank for getting that for us and again sometimes what, you, what appears to be live but doesn't certainly have the impact and that was a classic point round five scheduled for 12 the USBA heavyweight championship on the line James Broad black trunks with a gold waistband Tony Tucker in the white trunks and Broad far more effective now in using the left jab Ooh. Good body shot in a right hand by Broad. And there's no doubt that one landed. Broad connected with a good left hook to the body and then show, followed with a good right hand over the top. He's starting to connect a little bit better now in these fourth and fifth rounds. And so at the point in many of his previous fights, the James Broad began to tire, began to look lethargic. He seems to be picking the pace up. So maybe we have seen a transformed James Broad. A young man who came down from 278 pounds five months ago to the 242 that he weighed in for this fight. A young man that's been training in 100 degree plus temperatures in Las Vegas who says he really is in perhaps the best physical condition in a long, long time. Excellent crowd of nearly 3,000 here at the Trump Plaza. This, at least in this part of the country, has been a much ballyhooed fight. Broad and Tucker, who have done things at points in their career, basically as amateurs, to open the eyes of the boxing world, getting a chance tonight, perhaps as a gateway to a very big payday. The IBF heavyweight champion, Leon Spinks, awaiting the winner of this fight. Or perhaps I should say, the winner of this fight awaiting a crack it at Michael Spinks. Did I say Leon Spinks? Excuse me for that. Leon held the crown for a short period of time as well. In a stunning upset of Muhammad Ali and how well we remember that one. Yes. Under 30 seconds to go in the round. In between the uh, fourth and fifth round, Sam, the uh, referee Randy Newman went over to Tucker and warned him about his low blows. Since then, he's landed another couple of really low blows in this round. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if this affects the scoring of the fight. Friday night ringside continues from the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City in just a moment. Where do you land? This is one of the low blows that uh, Randy Newman's warning Tucker about. And you, as you can see, it lands way below the belt line. We are back live. This is round six, scheduled for 12. And this is almost never, never land for James Broad. He has not gone past five rounds since August of 1984. But as I hasten to point out, he says he is in better condition than he has been in some time. And so let's see whether he's got some stamina. He's still got a very sharp left jab. Oh, a stinging left jab. At this point, if you were James Broad, Murray Sutherland, would you take that 26-pound weight advantage and start to kill the body of Tony Tucker, or would you keep working upstairs with the left jab? Well, right now, Sam, he's trying to do everything he said he was going to do. It's just that Tony Tucker is being real elusive. He's not staying in one place long enough for Broad to use that weight advantage. Uh, the weight advantage comes into effect right now when they're close together, laying on each other. But up until now, he's never had that opportunity. Watching Tucker throw combinations at Broad gives me the feeling that 
Tucker sometimes feels he's hitting the big bag. You know, the bag isn't moving. Broad is staying right there in front of him. He's giving him the great combinations, and it's like hitting that huge bag. That's correct, yeah. Just a few seconds ago, they, the two fighters came close to one another, and both their heads clashed. Randy Newman looked at Tucker as if to say, watch your head there. Didn't say anything, but uh, we better watch you for cuts. Good combinations by both fighters. They both landed in that exchange. Under a minute and a half to go in the sixth round. And again, our local stations, be alerted, will be coming your way with a break. Excellent, excellent right hand there delivered by Tucker, Sam. Neither fighter, however, appears to be phased by the punishment. Although you know it's got... Oh, and a good left hook by Tucker, and Broad stayed right in front of him. Tucker is hitting Broad with everything he's got. And James is still on his feet. One minute to go. Referee Randy Newman moving between the two fighters, approaching the 30-second mark. Broad at times uses that left hand like he's cuffing Tucker, and it sounds like it's more painful perhaps or more damaging than it is. Under 30 seconds to go in the round. Good double left by Tucker again. A better round for Tony Tucker than the last two or three. Much better, Sam. His punches are much, much more crisper than Broad's at this point moment. Tony Tucker in the white trunks, James Broad in the black. We've gone through six rounds, and we'll return after this word from your local station. Hang with us. This is action from the previous round. Beautiful left hook here. Broad just stands there, doesn't do anything. Just let Tucker land those exciting punches. And we're back live. This is round seven. Tucker in the white trunks, James Broad in the black trunks. James Broad, who won the U.S. Olympic Trials gold medal and had to be a sorely disappointed young man when the U.S. boxing team did not engage the Russians in the 1980 Olympic Games. You'll remember the boycott, of course, of all our American athletes. But he did at least have the satisfaction of beating Marvis Frazier in the semifinals and going on to win the gold medal during the U.S. Olympic Trials. Since then, it's been what? How would you describe it? a career? A couple of losses? Scored some impressive knockouts, yet never had a big payday and certainly never beaten anybody significant in his climb to the top. I might add right now, Sam, I've watched James Broad fighting in many fights. This is actually the best I've seen him conditioned in any of his fights. He has still got plenty of gas left and uh, he's throwing some good punches in there. Typical with any heavyweight fight, one punch can turn the whole fight round. And Broad continues to be the aggressor as he has through uh, six complete rounds of this fight. And quite frankly, while we've talked a lot about the excellent condition, or at least the better condition that Broad is in than he has been for past fights, Tony Tucker came in at 216. That's, got, that's light for any heavyweight. It's particularly light when you're fighting a man who's 242. But it's light for Tony Tucker, and I think some of the people in his corner were concerned about it. Yes, anytime you give away that big weight advantage to the other fighter, it, uh, it can prove hazardous sometimes. Some of Tony Tucker's problems along the way have not been his own. We mentioned at the outset of the broadcast the fact that his father has been a dominant figure in his life and his career, and good left hand, and some people feel that it's probably been to Tony Tucker's detriment that his father has been such a dominant figure. On the other hand, the young man suffered a dislocated kneecap and underwent surgery back in 1983. Was out of action for some 15 months. He's had damaged hands at times. It's put him out for seven or eight months. So in part, that's why he's had six years of almost anonymity. We are nearing the end of round seven, scheduled for 12. And it's almost like the coasting period in the fight. As if both are bracing now for the stretch drive. Eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Should they need it? Sam Nover, Murray Sutherland, ringside. Hope you're enjoying this. And Friday night ringside will continue from the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino on the boardwalk of Atlantic City in just a moment. We are back live. Some people thought we'd never reach this far. Uh, I know one who's sitting behind one of these microphones tonight. Yours truly. This is round eight. 
Tony Tucker in the white trunks, James Broad in the black. If you've just joined us from Trump Plaza in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Third man in the ring is Randy Newman. It has been a very good heavyweight fight. And certainly for James Broad, who has been known to be lethargic at times, he has brought the fight to Tucker and just walked into a good left hand from Tony Tucker. Tucker starting to land just beautifully with that left, short left hook, Sam. He's setting up with a jab and then he just cocks it back a couple of inches and boom, throws that left hand over the top. Are we ready for a stretch drive here? Do you think they're both winding it up here or maybe one of them still in kind of a holding pattern? I don't know about Broad. He's hard to read. Broad has put the pressure on uh, Tucker ever since the opening bell. Uh, just hope, I hope he's reserved some for the late rounds. This is a 12-round fight. Chopping right hand by James Broad. He's getting in his licks. Tucker working the body and trying to come up high. Under two minutes to go in round eight. We talked about Tony Tucker having 33 fights, and you may ask, who's he fought? Well, he says that the biggest man in the most difficult fight he ever had was against Eddie the Animal Lopez. And he KO KO'd Lopez in nine rounds back in 1984. He also decisioned James, uh, Jimmy Young in his hometown of Grand Rapids in the same year. And other than that, I doubt if you've heard of many of them. Most of the uh, opponents that he's fought is we call it in the business of our household names, the, uh, Joe Smith. Uh, he really hasn't fought anybody of the James Broad caliber. When he fought Jimmy Young, Jimmy Young was on the downslide from his career. Eddie Animal Lopez is known as a trial horse, and this is his biggest fight to date. And so far, he is performing up to expectation. Round eight. Tucker in the white. Trying to throw the combinations. The problem for Tucker continues to be, as it has been all night, that he's landing his best shots and James Broad is not budging. It is like hitting the heavy bag. Tucker's doing the work, but Broad's taking everything he's throwing his way. Another good left hand, and, and Tucker working inside very effectively. And it was thought perhaps that that was the area that Broad would be most effective. I think at this point, Sam, Broad is starting to show a little bit wear and tear from the, the good punches that Tucker's landing on him. Nineteen, eighteen seconds to go in the round. A rather uneventful round. But certainly setting the stage now, setting up rounds 9, 10, 11, and 12. Friday night ringside continues from the Trump Plaza after these commercial messages. We'll be back. Over in Murray Sutherland, ringside. It is Friday night ringside. Glad to have you with us. Round number nine, James Broad in the black trunks, Tony Tucker in the white. And I ought to ask you, you've been laboring here at your score pad, Murray Sutherland. Who have you got ahead to this point? I have Tony Tucker uh, ahead with a really good, really good score right now. Decided advantage, don't you? Very decided advantage. But as we all know, and we've seen in one of the pre preliminary fights, it's a 12-round fight, and that fight is not over till the 12th round. And I'm going to let our viewers peek right over your shoulder here and tell them that you've given every single round to Tony Tucker except the first. This is true. I scored one, ro one round a draw being the fifth round. Uh, every other round I've given on a 10-9 basis to Tony Tucker. All right, sir. We'll add them up at the end and see how you did. If we get to a decision. Oh, Whoa, beautiful Great left combination left. by Tucker and he's got Broad in trouble. Those James Broad is holding on. And Murray, exactly as you said, he is a very fatigued young man, James yeah. Broad. And Tucker is wailing away. Those sharp, sharp left hooks that we were talking about earlier has taken the toe. Beautiful right hand there by Tucker. Tucker using the jab. And Broad is just hanging on. Look how low he's carrying his gloves. He can't even get his hands up in front of his face. But I might also hasten to add that Tucker is a bit fatigued himself. Tucker's thrown a lot of punches, and uh, like you said, Broad is just like a big heavy bag, and you've, he has just went eight rounds on a heavy bag. He's going to be tired. He has been knocked out once. Tim Witherspoon took him out in two. And Broad said he was just awed by that whole atmosphere of the night in Buffalo, New York, that Witherspoon took him out. But he is just leaning on Tucker, and Tony is almost happy to hold him up. Another vicious left hook there. One of those left hooks could end this fight, Sam. Under a minute to go in round number nine. We alert our local stations. We will stay here after round number nine. 
and we'll go back to the corner of Tony Tucker first. They've got to be pleased with his performance tonight. Now, I want to tell you, Murray, I saw this young man and had the pleasure of doing a couple of Tony Tucker fights as an amateur for NBC back in 1980 and 81. Actually, 79 and 80. And he, at the time, was the most impressive amateur fighter that I had ever seen in my life. He was fighting as a light heavyweight. Uh, and then he disappeared, to my eyes, into a lot of people's eyes. And we have already enumerated the problems that he had. But I, he's got a world of talent, this young man. He's one of the, along with Mike Tyson, Tony Tucker is one of the brightest prospects in the heavyweight division at this time. We will get through round number nine, and we will follow Tony Tucker back to his corner. And listen to his handlers, Luther Burgess and his father, Bob Tucker. An excellent round for Tony Tucker. Let's see what's going on back there. Just stay on top of it. You can win the fight easy. Well, you, you, really, really, really. You, stay on top of me, Tony. Get a nice fight. Get a nice fight. You're doing good, baby. You listen to me, Tony. Listen. If you stay on this side, this guy, you can beat this guy. You hit him with four and five punches, he's none. He can't punch inside, but you, you can. When you get inside, get your body close to him, but he get no room to fight. Now let's jump across to James Broad. Stand straight up, bend down with this guy and work that body and put something behind him, put some snap into him. You're pushing your punches. Okay, Murray, let's take a look at some of this action here from round nine. I think this we're going to see some of those beautiful left hooks. Look how short and crisp those are. And the good right hand follows right through the middle. Picture perfect. It's the bell and round number 10. Scheduled for 12 and Broad now coming out as he did in round number one. I get the feeling that James Broad knows he needs a knockout to win this one, Murray Sutherland. Yeah, Broad walked it right out the way he started every single round previous to that, but connected with a good left jab and then a beautiful right hand over the top. Tucker trying to stay out of harm's way. Back pedaling and flying in with a left hook. He has fought a very, very good fight. Whoever created his game plan, and it's got to be Burgess and his father, I think they've done a nice job. They know that he doesn't have the kind of power that Broad does. But he had to win this fight standing up, obviously, and I don't mean to be facetious, but he's got to win it on his toes. He's this, got to move, he's got to stick, and he's got to work his combinations. That's Tucker's best fight anyway, Sam, his moving, using his speed, and his, got a, his, he has got a good reach. I think both these gentlemen reach are practically identical. 82 inches. I think there are only five champions or so in the history of the heavyweight division who've ever had longer reaches than that. And if you wonder what 82 inches in reach means, well, I can give you something to equate it with. 82 inches is five more than Joe Lewis ever had, and it's 13 inches more than Rocky Marciano. He had arms like, like I did, I guess, huh, for a short guy. This is true. Boy, he could use them, though. Tucker working the body very effectively. You wondered whether the body punching would take its toll on Broad, and the answer is very clear here in round number 10 as we've reached a midway point. Broad at this point does look the more tired of the two fighters. Broad connecting with a jab of his own then, but the minute he gets close to Tucker, Tucker grabs him and ties him up. Good left hand, straight left by uh, Tucker. We will caution you that in the preliminary fight that we had here, it was a similar one-sided fight. Tim Bullock, a virtual unknown, had Eddie Davis in all sorts of trouble, had him bleeding from both eyes. And we kept wondering if Davis would ever unleash the knockout punch, and he unleashed a flurry in, what was it, the ninth round in 59 seconds, and it was all over for Bullock. They stopped the fight. So, uh... As Casey Stengel used to like to say, it ain't over until you know what. <laughs> Alert our local stations will be coming your way here at the end of round 10 in exactly 24 seconds. So stand by. Broad with a wild left hand. Tucker looks a little bit more tired in this round as he did in the previous round, Sam. Maybe these, uh, this relentless pressure that Broad's been putting on is starting to catch up with him. So we've completed 10 rounds at Trump Plaza in Atlantic City. We'll return after this word from your local station. Sam, Sam, this is some of the excitement from the 10th uh, round. I gave this round to Broad and purely on the basis of a couple of exchanges just like this one you see here. 
We're back live, round 11, scheduled for 12. The USBA Heavyweight Championship hanging in the balance. More importantly, and I would imagine somewhere in this great land of ours, IBF champion Michael Spinks is uh, watching as an interested uh, bystander because he may get the winner of this fight next. I think the winner of this fight is guaranteed the number one spot as uh, the IBF, just as uh, Tony Tucker there landed a beautiful right hand. Uh, so therefore, Michael Spinks has a mandatory defense coming up. And they say it'll be in January. Of course, he's in another elimination situation there, but he's got a mandatory title defense coming up before that in January. Well, the way he has performed tonight, Tucker certainly has catapulted uh, into the arena of the, of the contenders. He is a contender. You can't say he's a great fighter because he hasn't really beaten anybody until James Braun. But he is a contender. He's fought very well tonight. Under two minutes to go in the 11th round. Absolutely, Sam. He is establishing himself tonight against a good, good contender. Therefore, uh, he has taken credit for his number one spot. I just like to make, I uh, just would like to add right now, wish Michael Spinks a uh, safe recovery. He was in, I heard from one of his people that he was involved in a car accident a couple of weeks ago with his manager, Butch Lewis. But Lewis. Good and right hand by Tucker. Excuse me, Murray. As he was fading away against the ropes. Go ahead, I'll let you continue by all means. And I pass along the same feeling. Just like to say, I hope he gets on the road to recovery and gets back in there. Tucker back to doing what he's done so very successfully here in this fight. Working the body like the heavy bag and then coming up top. If this is not a successful venture for James Broad, one has to wonder, Murray, what next for the young man? Well, according to him today, he has put everything he has for the last two months into preparation for this fight. It must be terribly disheartening to get in there only to be beaten if he is, in fact, beaten tonight. Uh, he's got to sit down and wonder where he goes from here. What is it like? Have you been there? I, Has there been a fight in your life that you said, I'm going to give it everything I've got and you didn't win it? Absolutely. Many times, Sam. And I'll tell you, it takes a, takes a good couple of weeks to get the bitter taste out of your mouth. It's, uh, it's a terrible feeling. 20 seconds to go in the 11th round. Tony Tucker appears to be three minutes and about 16 seconds away from a most impressive victory. Friday night ringside from the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino on the boardwalk of Atlantic City. We'll continue after we take time out for this commercial message. I'm here at New York's Fifth Avenue and 47th Street. Sam Nover and Murray Sutherland welcome you back to the Trump uh, Plaza in Atlantic City. They touch gloves to start the 12th and final round with Tony Tucker seemingly, although we've seen some strange decisions uh, over the years, Murray, seemingly having this one in his control. If he can get through three minutes against James Broad, but that will be no easy task. Because nope. Broad, too, knows he needs a knockout. Yes, Sam, uh, Broad's been sent out from the corner. We heard the uh, cornerman in his corner telling him, you've got to knock him out to win. And that's exactly what he has on his mind right now. But then again, I've heard managers and trainers say you've got to knock them out in the last round. As part of the con. Huh? Just part of the con job. Tucker surprisingly staying right in there now with Broad. You'd think he'd get on the uh, bicycle and start. Here he goes. Backpedaling a little bit. What would you do if you were Tucker? Just clinch and backpedal for three, or can you afford exchange a few punches with a man? Well, I think you've got to. Uh, I think he knows he has safely got this fight in the bag if he goes to 12 rounds, but at the same time, you've got that ego as well. You want to get in there and hit him as well. Plus, a knockout would look good. It would set him up for a great next fight. Midway through the 12th and final round. Tucker's still on the balls of his feet. And he's working the body and upstairs on a good looping right hand. Nails the side of the face of James Broad. Tony Tucker looking to go 34 and 0 and get a crack at a big payday. And he appears to be on the threshold of all of that. Despite having given away 26 pounds to James Broad, he has been able to weather any storm, and he certainly has had the better combinations, like right now. 
flailing away with a right and the left hand. And the left hook has been a very key punch for him, as well as the left. It's almost like Tucker is telling him, Murray, you can't hurt me, James. You can't hurt me. 30 seconds to go. I don't know about that, Sam. Broad just landed a good left hook flush on Tucker's jaw, and I, uh, I think that one hurt him a bit. Well, if you like styles making your match, how about this one? The brawler and the boxer tonight. It's been an excellent one. 12 rounds, and it will go the distance. James Broad in the black trunks. Tony Tucker in the white will return to the Trump Plaza for the decision after this. In the most important fight for both fighters, James Broad and Tony Tucker have gone 12 rounds, and Murray, how have you got it scored? Sam, I have Tucker winning the fight on a, a decisive margin, 118 to 112. Right? That, that is my scoring. That is decisive. Six points is a is a whale of a margin as you look into the corner of Tony Tucker, and we are waiting now for ring announcer Ed Darien to get all of the cards together, and I believe he has them all together. So let's go up now for the decision. Ring announcer Ed Darien. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision and a scoring by points as follows. Judge Gene Grant observed the fight 117-110. Judge Frank Cairo, he watched the fight at 117-109. And Frank Brunette scored it 118-111. For the winner, and the new United States Boxing Association heavyweight champion, Tony TNT Tucker. Wow. Well, I'll tell you something, Murray Sutherland. You are a great scorekeeper. They had it uh, as wide a margin as you did. One guy had it 117-109, one at 118, 111. It was every bit as impressive to the judges at ringside as it was to you. It sure was. Uh, Tucker seemed to dominate the fight, uh, Sam. He was scoring with that beautiful short left jab and left hook, and he just wouldn't let Broad do anything. So a most impressive victory for Tony Tucker, and as we have set the scene for you, it appears now as if uh, Michael Spinks is next. For Murray Sutherland, this is Sam Nover bidding you goodbye from Trump Plaza in Atlanta.